Have you ever received a payment through PayPal or Stripe and noticed that the amount that gets deposited into your bank account does not equal the amount that you invoice? Well, how do you record this in QuickBooks? Uh, this is a question that I receive all the time and a very common error that I see in my client's book. My name is Jeanette Andrada and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, today I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in order to um, correctly categorize these transactions into QuickBooks. Now, the reason that this happens is that whenever you use PayPal or Stripe, um, what they do is that they collect the full amount that your client is paying you and they take out the fees their fees for processing that payment. What gets, uh, whatever's left over is what gets deposited into your bank account. So let's go over this example here. I am currently logged into a sample account in QuickBooks. Um, if we can see here, I'm going to be focusing on this transaction. It's from an A rental and the amount received is $200. So if I go into my invoices and look for a rental, I can see that I billed a rental $203. Now I only received $200. Um, and I want to make sure that this is all categorized correctly. I don't want to edit the amount of the invoice because our client did pay $203. So the way that we would um, record this is the first thing you want to do is that you want to receive payment for your um, <clears throat> you want to receive payment for your invoice and when we are receiving the payment we're going to deposit the payment into deposited undeposited funds I'm going to change the date um, to May 4th um, so the amount received is $203 we can see that the invoice has already been selected so um, again it's going to be deposited into undeposited funds so I'm going to save and close. All right, so now it shows that this invoice has been paid. Now there's an additional step that we need to take, which is to create the bank deposit. So our client pays through PayPal and um, or through Stripe, and it might take a couple of days for you to transfer the money over for the money to be deposited in your bank account. So by indicating here um, that it's been paid and it's in your undeposited funds, you're you're saying that you received or you, the invoice has been paid. Um, so now what we want to do is create the bank deposit. We're going to see here. Here's the payment for um, a rental. You know, it's the money that we receive. We're going to deposit it into our checking account. Now, the, this is where we are going to utilize this section down here to record the fees that were withdrawn from PayPal or Stripe. So from your um, the account, what we want to do is we want to enter a transaction processing fee. This is a, this is a um, <clears throat> demo, um, so it doesn't have it. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add it. I'm going to add this as um, an expense and I'm going to put that under bank charges. Okay. And <clears throat> so again, this deposit currently, we are saying that we are depositing $203, but we really only received $200. So what we want to do is um, do a negative three as you can see, the amount changed to $200, right? So we're going to go ahead and save and close. Now, when I go to my banking, <clears throat> I'm going to look for this transaction, and here it is. QuickBooks, as you saw earlier, it didn't find that match because we received 200 and um, it was it was looking for a transaction that equal to 100. So here's the deposit that we just created and matched it up to that $200. So we're going to hit add, and that's it. It's that simple. Um, so you want to make sure that you're following this process because essentially it's going to keep your books clean. It's going to show what you actually received in your bank account, and it's going to clean out your account receivable. It's going to clear that invoice that you created. Another reason that you want to do it this way is that you want to track how much you're spending on these fees. So if I go to if I go to the reports, 
I can. My little head out of the way. If I go into my reports <clears throat> and I go into my profit and loss statement, I'm just going to filter to all dates. We're going to see that the, the transaction processing fee is now um, here. And so our income is still $203, which is going to uh, come up in here and then as an expense because it is an expense you want to make sure that you're writing that that off on your taxes it's a it's a tax deductible expense um so those processing fees are three dollars and there that's pretty much it all right guys again my name is Jeanette Andrada this was a really quick video I hope you found it helpful please make sure to like or have or comment let me know if you have any other questions and I will be happy to help thank you until next time